Hello and thank you for joining me for the first tutorial in my new YouTube series Making Miniature Food and today we're going to start off with something fairly simple some cookies and biscuits. I'll be telling you what we need in the way of materials and clays as we go through the tutorial so let's get started. Okay so we're going to start off with some chocolate chip cookies so I've got here my brown clay and the colour is actually chocolate I've got my single edged blade and some poppy seeds or you could use chia seeds pop those over there and then I just want to cut off a tiny piece of the brown clay so that's probably about less than 10 millimeter square that I'm cutting off there so maybe I don't know three eighths of an inch square go for that you really don't need too much and as you sort of progress um, in making miniature food you'll learn how much you need for how many biscuits or how many cakes etc but when you're starting out it's better just to start off with small quantities and a little really does go a long way so I think I said in my intro video I haven't worked with clay for quite some time and the clays in my tin are all fairly hard so what I'm doing is just working this between my fingers, really trying to warm it up and soften it up. Now I also mentioned that you can buy um, like a liquid softener. But before you sort of rush out and buy that, do just um, work with your clay and see if you can soften it up. And nine out of ten times you can had a couple of um, suggestions that actually made me laugh when we were talking about softening clay and somebody had said that they sit on theirs for a while while they're working on something else. Another lady suggested um, sort of sticking the clay in your armpit to warm it up. But on both occasions do keep the clay in the packet. Now I have actually got quite warm hands but if you hadn't, you could warm your hands up maybe on a, um, a hot water bottle or hold them over a radiator for a little while or even just wash them in warm water and then try to soften up the clay and this is softening up quite nicely now and I want to get it into a nice sort of soft um, piece without too many cracks in it so those cracks are a sign still that it's a little bit too dry so you want it to be either a nice um, sort of smooth ball or a nice smooth piece. So I'll keep going for a little while. And if you find that any of the sort of little dry pieces are breaking off, you can just stick them up like that with your main piece. Then you're not wasting anything. So I've been kneading this now probably for five minutes, if that. And that's lovely and soft and just the texture that I want it. So we now want to add the poppy seeds. So flatten it out just with your fingers. Not sort of flatten it into any particular shape. Don't worry if it splits like that. Get it sort of quite thin. And then you can just tip on top of there a few of the seeds. Sprinkle them evenly over the surface. And then you can fold them into the clay. Again, sort of dot your clay to pick them up. Like that. And then again, just begin working them into the clay to distribute them evenly couple of escaped there. And now roll your um, clay into a ball, so put it in your palm of your hand and roll. It doesn't have to be an exact ball for this project, that's more of a sort of pear shape. And then roll it into a sausage. 
like that. And you can get it started in your hand and then you can roll it out on your tile or your work surface. And we want this to be about three millimetres or one eighth of an inch thick. And I haven't got my acrylic rule here, it must be in the back of my drawer somewhere, so I'm using my steel rule, but an acrylic rule really is better. It's still a little bit too thick, so keep rolling. And don't worry if it's not exactly even all the way along. Measure again, and that's about three now. And then cut off the end. You can actually still use that and then cut your way along and you're making them about two millimetres, five sixty fourths of an inch thick. But again, you don't have to measure and you don't have to be exact because as in real life, the chances of sort of making a batch of cookies and they're all exactly the same size is pretty remote. So you can see here what I mean about a little going a long way because already I've got what 14 cookies there and look how much of the clay I've got left. So I've done 24 there and then I'm just going to roll this back into a little ball and use that again another day. So you can put it into one of those little plastic um, sealy bags and then pop that back in your tin. You can either put a little note in with it saying um, chocolate cookie mix or something just to remind you what it is. I'm just going to pop back to one side for now. And then you want to take each of your little um, circles, roll them again into a rough ball between your fingers you'll find when you're rolling between your fingertips is the best way to get a nice circle or a nice round. And then pop that back onto your tile and just with your finger just press it. And there's our first cookie. Use your blade to scrape that up very carefully so you don't sort of adjust the shape. Just pop that there for now. So roll it into a nice little ball and then flatten it with your finger. Again, some will be thinner than others. And don't worry if you get that splitting around the edge because that is actually what happens with real cookies. It all adds to the realism. In fact, I'm going to press that one a little bit more. I want it to be a bit thinner. So these little um, two millimeter sized slices, should we say? Let me flatten that out. Gives you a cookie measuring six millimetres. So times that by 12, so that would be 72 millimetres. So that cookie in real life would be just under three inches in diameter. And that is about right for a cookie. So as well, when you're making things like biscuits, do make sure you don't make them too large. So once you've flattened out each of your um, cookies, they'll have a nice little bit of texture on the top from your um, finger. But I'm going to add a little bit more using this coarse grained sandpaper. I'm just going to sort of fold it over like that. And then I'm just going to dab it on the top of each one. And that just gives them a lovely little texture. And again, adds to that realism. So make sure you cover the whole um, cookie, which will have sort of some texture and some flat bits. And 
And if when you're flattening them out you think, oh, that one's a bit too small, you can just add another little bit of, um, you know, just scrape it up again and add another little bit of clay to it. Or join it with another one to make a larger cookie. I normally end up missing ones. Let me just check that I've done them all. Yep. So they're now done. And if you think you would like to have um, some more chocolate chips in there, then you can add a few more poppy seeds. But try not to add too many, or the clay will just become sort of very dry and you won't be able to form it into a shape if you've got sort of more seed than, than clay in there. Now I'm not sure if you can actually see the texture and I've done here, but what I'll do is I'll get a close-up photograph of that to show you. So these are now ready to be transferred onto my baking tile. Now I don't actually put this one in the oven until I've almost filled it. So you want to use your um, razor blade to scrape that up very carefully and sort of jiggle the blade as you move it underneath so that you're not sort of changing the shape of the cookie. And then just transfer it carefully onto your other tile and you could use another blade to remove it from the blade if it's become a little bit sticky and then just lay that on there and once they're baked they're actually easier to get up you might find that you can just sort of move that off with your finger but if not do use the other blade as you'll distort the shape Okay, so now we'll move on to some plain chocolate chip cookies. So because we've just been using a dark coloured clay, I've cleaned off the tile and the blades. And when you're doing the blades, be, be very careful obviously of your fingers, but also make sure you get along this ridge along the top line because clay can get stuck in there. And if you don't know it's there, you'll suddenly have a sort of um, dark coloured streak on your work and you won't know where it's come from. And we're now going to mix um, some champagne with some white and we're going to make the plain chocolate chip cookies. And I'm going to use a little bit more this time because then I'm going to use the same mixture to make some almond biscuits. So now this white clay is a new clay and as you can see that's lovely and soft and supple already but this is one of my original clays and it's as hard as rock so before I mix them I'm going to soften this one up and this actually feels even harder and drier than the um, chocolate coloured clay and you can see how dry it is because it's just really crumbling But I'll warm it up and then add those bits back in and this will prove I think with this one whether it can or cannot be done um, just by kneading it and working it in your fingers and that's why as well it's a good idea to have a piece of card or maybe a plastic tablecloth or something underneath your um, tile or your work surface just in case any of the clay goes onto it and then you can pick it up clean without getting any bits in it. And already that is starting to soften up. I'll, st I'll still need to sort of soften it a lot more. But you can see, and that was extremely dry and hard. And if you think you'd rather sort of make it easy for yourself and um, buy the solution to soften it up then obviously do so but if you want to save yourself a little bit of money and, and do it like this and it, it does work I just sort of feel in the texture there and the white does feel a lot more pliable 
but I think now the champagne is soft enough to add in with the white. So sort of shape it into a rough sausage. So they're sort of both like that. Squeeze them together and then you can roll between your hands. You see you start getting this lovely sort of marbling effect. So keep rolling it. And you can make it into a ball. So you're just really sort of rolling it and balling it up until the colours have completely blend blended. You don't want any striping in there, you just want one solid colour. And as the lines in there become sort of more blurred, that means it's starting to blend into one. So just keep going until you've got a solid colour. So that is now nicely blended. And I just want to make it again into a sausage. Like that. And I'm just going to cut a bit off the end. And this is for the cookie mixture. Now this piece I'm going to put over on the um, tray that I've set aside for baking. Just because I want it out of the way and to keep it clean until I need it again. So I pop that over there. And then this piece we can add our poppy seeds to. So flatten that out. Tip those over quite evenly. And again, just begin blending those in. Not letting any escape. So constantly sort of putting into a sausage and then a ball until they're more or less evenly distributed. So I'm going to continue rolling that out on my tile. And I was worried I wouldn't have enough, but I've probably still got more than more than I need for the 24. So I actually got 30 out of that. So same thing again. Roll them all into a little ball and then flatten them out on your tile. And as you've sort of been doing a lot of sort of kneading and shaping and things, you might find that your fingers become a little bit too warm. So if the clay's sticking to them in particular, you can go and wash your hands. And the chocolate chips show up really nicely in these ones. So before I add the texture to these cookies, I want to add a little bit of colour. And I'm going to do that using these chalk pastels. And I've got here a piece of uh, paper, just scrap paper, and a nice small soft um, paintbrush. And I want to create a baked cookie colour. So I'm going to take this um, light brown chalk and I just want to get a bit of the chalk off on there. And just a little tiny bit of brick red. And over here I've got some um, yellow ochre, a little bit of that as well. And then just pick a little bit of each up on your brush. And you just want to mix a very, very light brown. So you don't want a lot on the brush at all, so sort of dab the brush into the mixture. and then just very lightly tap it onto the top of the cookie. And if you 
feel that that's not enough colour, you can pick a little bit more up. And dab it around the top like that. And you don't need to dab it on there too heavily. I actually want to add a little bit more yellow. You're just sort of tapping it on, but applying it evenly. And that gives them that just baked look. And then as we did with our chocolate chip cookies, I'm going to use a piece of harsh sandpaper to texture the top, but don't use the piece that you used for your other cookies as you may, um, again, contaminate the colour. I'm trying to make it into a little triangle there. And then again, just go over each one and create that texture. And I find that by doing this after you've coloured, it adds a nice look to the colouring and a more natural look. And again, they're now ready to be baked. But before I move my piece of um, clay that I mixed, for the almond biscuits. I'm just going to go and wash my hands again and get this chalk dust off of my fingers. Okay, we're now going to make some almond biscuits. So I've brought back in the mixture we made earlier, the equal parts of white and champagne. I've got my cutter here, round cutter, six millimeter diameter or quarter of an inch diameter. I've got my nylon roller and some talcum powder which we're going to use just like flour if you were doing some real baking to stop the roller from sticking um, to the clay. So I'm going to cut off probably about an inch I think and again I'll put that piece safely to one side and then I'll just roll this into a ball to start so use your palm just to flatten that out on your tile. And then I just want to tip a little bit of the talc onto the um, roller. And just put a tiny bit on the tile there as well. And onto the clay. And then you just want to roll it out. And you want it to be quite thin because again bear in mind one millimeter thickness is going to be 12 millimeters as, as a real life size so that would be quite a thick biscuit so if you can you want to try to get it to about half a millimeter and you want it to be as evenly rolled as possible and this is where things like the um, pasta machine I showed you in the intro come in handy. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit more talc on there. But when you're just doing a little bit like this, it's not really worth it. I just find it's easier to roll it. So I think that's probably about right. So I'll just dip the cutter in the talc there as well. And then just begin cutting out. And if it comes out in your cutter, then you could use the end of the paintbrush just to very gently push that out. I'm just putting my cutter in there and twisting it around. It's 
So once you've used up all of your space, just very, very gently lift the clay. And then you can either roll this um, clay back out again if you want to make some more or add that to the lot that we made earlier and that can be used for something else and I'm going to do that so I'll pop that back up there and then I want to add the almond or the sesame seed first um, and then we're going to use the chalk again just to give them that baked look now I'm putting the um, sesame seed in there first as if you add the chalk first the seed won't stick down as well so I've got my jar of sesame seeds here and I'm just going to tip a few out put that lid on okay and then to put those on you can use tweezers if you want but I like to use a pin and it can be a little bit tricky but if you just stab one onto the end of the pin and then put it onto the biscuit and just press it down a little bit and you want to press it down into the clay and the final one there so I kept my sheet of paper from earlier when we did the cookies and I've just added a little bit more chalk to each pile there and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again and just apply a bit to each biscuit and on these I'm using more of the um, sort of yellow ochre colour than I am the red and do make sure you brush a little bit around the outside edge as well. On those first couple of biscuits there I was a little bit heavy handed. They look a bit, little bit dark but I'll still keep them and they can go at the bottom of my display. And they too are now ready to be transferred onto our baking tile. Okay so again I'm bringing in the piece that we mixed earlier. And I'm just going to cut the end off of there, I don't want the whole lot. Put that to one side and then again I just want to soften this up a little bit. Now I'm going to make some shortbread and shortbread's got that lovely sort of crumbly texture to it so I'm going to be adding some texture into this. So squeeze it sort of into a, a flat that on your tile. So to texture the clay I'm going to be using ground rice and it's got a texture that's coarser than flour but not as coarse as something like caster sugar. It's rather like a really sort of fine sand. Okay so bring the clay back in and just sprinkle just a little pinch onto the clay and you don't want too much else the clay will go um, really dry and crumbly so fold it in and then just start kneading it between your fingers again I'm actually not going to pick that up I'm just going to brush that bit away that's on the tile because I think that might be a little bit too much so you really do just want a little pinch And if you think you've added too much, then add some more of your mixture. Add some more clay. So again, you want to keep balling and sausaging your clay until the mixture is sort of evenly distributed. And then again, just flatten that down with your palm. And we're going to roll it out again. So I just want to get a little bit more talc on there. So 
make sure you've got a nice evenly rolled piece and again not too thick and this time I'm using my larger round cutter and this is 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch and I want to cut two of these in fact I'll see if I can get three out of there I think I can yep just Again, okay, pull away your excess clay. And remember that is now textured, so don't add it back into the mixture we did earlier. If you want to flatten that out again and cut another round from it, you can. And then bring in your needle. And we're just going to do some um, dots in circles all the way around and right into the centre. Now you can see around the edges of these you've got some little bits of uneven clay but don't worry about that because once we've baked them we can just cut that off with our craft knife. So I now want to sprinkle a little bit more of the ground rice on top. So again, just a little pinch on each one. And then with your finger, just very gently sort of press that into the clay. the lid on there and then you can just very gently just blow off that excess like that and then I'm going to bring in the tile that's ready for baking and pop these on there just press it down and now we're going to cut it into eighths so go straight across the centre And when you're doing this, just be careful that you're not um, interfering with any of your other pieces on there. And then like that. And then two more. Like that. And then they, they'll come apart quite easily once they've been baked. So do that with each piece. like that. So with that other little piece of um, textured clay I had left I'm going to make some shortbread fingers. So same thing again I'm going to roll that out and then I've got this cutter and that's a quarter of an inch by three quarters of an inch so six millimeters by 19 millimeters and I'm just going to use that to start with. If I can squeeze one more in on there, yes. Again, pull away your excess clay. And then I'm just going to use my blade to cut each of those into a little oblong or a little finger. Actually, if I get four out of each. Cut in half and then like that. And then again, you can use your pin just to do some little um, dots on there. Again, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the ground rice over the top of those. Press that in really gently. And they again can be transferred onto your sheet that's ready for baking. Okay, so we're now going to make some glacé cherries. Okay, so I've got here a small ball of translucent clay and I'm going to add to it some red. Now the red here, as you can see, isn't even half 
um, the size of the translucent. It's probably a third of the size. So make those into little sausages. And then just stick the red on the side there. And then you can blend those together. So keep going until that's evenly blended. And then make your little sausage. And then pop that on your tile. And we want to make that into about a 2mm thick roll. That's 5 64ths of an inch. And just cut that in half. Work with that one. Cut that into little slices. Again, sort of 1.5 to 2 millimetres. And then I've got a spare tile here. I'm going to roll each of these into a little ball between my fingertips and then just put them straight onto the spare tile to go into the oven on their own. So that's the individual cherries there and then I'm going to add on this sausage of clay and bake that as well and I'm just going to leave this in the oven for about 10 minutes. So here are my baked pieces and they were in the oven for about 10 minutes and then I've let them cool down for 10 minutes as well. So this piece here I want to cut up and mix in with the clay to make the cherry cookies. So you can still cut through it fairly easily. So just begin by cutting this into some tiny little pieces. So cut off those sort of slices and then you could cut those up as well into even smaller pieces. And the smaller the better. So I've chopped up there probably about a quarter of that roll and I think that'll be enough for my cookies. So here I've mixed together the last of my mixture with that little bit I had left over with the texture in it. And I'm going to blend it all together and then I'm going to use half for some cherry cookies and half for some cherry topped biscuits. So I've got half of my mixed piece here, so I want to flatten that out again and then add in my cherry pieces. So mix those in. Work them into the clay. And again, pick up all the pieces. So once they're distributed evenly throughout the clay, make your sausage again and then take it onto your tile. Again, you want this to be about three millimetres, one eighth of an inch thick. And then cut your slices. Again, I've just cut 24 there and put the rest to one side for now. And that can be kept if you haven't got time to make them all in one go. And again, form the little balls. And then flatten them out with your finger. They look really lovely with these little red pieces of cherry in them. Again, use your chalks to colour your cookies. Use sandpaper to texture. And then place them on your tile, ready for baking. Make the cherry biscuits the same way we did the almond biscuits.
this time using half a cherry to glaze. Okay, this tile is now ready to be baked and I'm going to put that in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. So they're now all baked and have completely cooled down and you'll find that some of them are still sort of sticking to the tile a little bit so you can just scrape them up with your um, blade and put them onto a piece of card ready to be displayed on a plate or however you're going to display them. And things like the shortbread, they may still be um, stuck together, so you can just recut down the lines. And it's easy to cut once it's hardened. So whilst these cherry biscuits are still on the tile, I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of um, gloss varnish and a tiny little brush just to glaze those cherries. And try not to get the varnish onto the biscuit. They look good enough to eat. So when plating up your food or displaying your food, you can use PVA to glue the pieces into place, but do just use a tiny amount, that's all that's needed, as you don't want any glue showing from underneath the food. Build up the displays in layers, so begin by gluing your base layer into place, let that dry, and then you can glue a second layer and then some pieces on top depending of course on what you're displaying. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you're new to the world of polymer clay and miniature food I hope it's inspired you to have a go. If you're not already a subscriber then please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button as well and then every time I add a video you'll be notified about it. You'll find a small range of polymer clay available for sale in my Etsy shop and I'll be extending this range over the coming months. If you enjoy making Doll's House miniatures and furniture, you might like to have a look at my books. I've published four of them so far, and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren. There'll be another miniature food tutorial coming soon, and I hope you'll join me. See you then. Bye! <laughs>